Folks, are you prepared for the unthinkable? In today's world, with escalating food insecurity due to pandemics, conflicts, and climate change, the question isn't if the next crisis will hit, but when. The numbers are staggering. Over 828 million people affected by hunger globally in 2021, a number that's only growing. Conflicts, climate change, and economic shocks have pushed our food systems to the brink. And with the war in Ukraine and skyrocketing fertilizer prices, even the basics like maize and wheat are under threat. But there's a way out, a way to take control, to secure your family's food supply. And it starts right in your backyard growing your own food. Are you ready to take that step? To transform your backyard into a bastion of food security? How will you feel when you have the power to provide for your family, no matter what the world throws at you? The time to act is now before the next crisis hits. Here are the 11 essential crops that can save you and your loved ones from starving during difficult times. Number one, potatoes. Potatoes have been a cornerstone of food security for centuries, offering a unique blend of versatility, ease of cultivation, and nutritional benefits that make them indispensable in times of scarcity. Their historical significance as a lifeline during the Irish famine underscores their ability to sustain populations under harsh conditions. The process of growing potatoes starts with the preparation of seed potatoes, which should be cut into pieces with one to two eyes each a couple of days before planting. This preparation helps in enhancing moisture retention and rot resistance, a key step for ensuring a robust yield. Potatoes thrive in a variety of soil conditions, but prefer a well-nourished environment, making the addition of compost to the planting area beneficial for their growth. There are several methods for planting potatoes, each adaptable to different gardening spaces and preferences. Whether planting in the ground, using the ridge and furrow method, or opting for containers, the key is to ensure adequate space for the tubers to develop. The incorporation of organic matter into the soil and strategic watering contribute significantly to the health of the plants. Potatoes require a sunny location and soil that is well-draining and rich in organic matter. The pH of the soil should ideally be between 4.2 and 7.0 to prevent common diseases such as scab. The nutritional profile of potatoes is impressive, providing a significant amount of vitamin C, potassium, and dietary fiber. These nutrients play crucial roles in maintaining heart health, muscle function, and overall cellular health. Furthermore, potatoes contain antioxidants that help combat free radicals, adding another layer of health benefits to their consumption. In times of difficulty, potatoes stand out as a crop that can be relied upon to produce a substantial yield from a relatively small space. Their ability to be stored for long periods without losing nutritional value makes them an excellent choice for ensuring food security. Whether freshly harvested or preserved through methods such as freezing, dehydrating, or canning, potatoes provide a versatile and nutritious food source that can significantly mitigate the risk of starvation. Sitting at number two on our must-grow list, corn's a powerhouse, guys. It's not just about popping corn for movie night. This crop is a key player in both our dinner plates and a whole lot more outside the kitchen. If you're looking into growing your own, remember, space is your friend. Don't cram those seeds too close. Keep them about 9 to 12 inches apart. This gives them the elbow room they need to soak up nutrients, water, and sunlight. Rows should have a good 30 to 36 inches between them to let that air flow and sunlight in, making your life easier when it comes to upkeep like pulling weeds or adding fertilizer. Now for getting those ears of corn you're dreaming about, plant in blocks, not lonely rows. This helps the wind do its pollination magic, upping your chances for a solid harvest. Water's a big deal for corn. Its roots are on the shallow side, so it needs a steady drink, about one inch a week, rain included. Hit them with water early in the day to cut down on waste and keep those dreaded leaf diseases at bay. A good layer of mulch keeps that moisture where it should be, fights off weeds, and keeps the ground temp stable. When those stalks hit about 6 inches, hit them with a nitrogen-rich boost, and then again when they're about knee-high to push that growth and get those ears developing. But corn's not just about eating. It feeds our livestock, goes into making ethanol to fuel our cars in a greener way, and pops up in everything from sweeteners in our snacks to the paper we write on. Corn oil, great for cooking and an ingredient in loads of products from salad dressings to margarine. And let's not forget, 
Corn's byproducts like corn gluten meal help out as a natural herbicide and fertilizer. Number three, cabbage. Mm -hmm. Cabbage is an excellent choice for preppers looking to grow a nutritious vegetable that can be eaten fresh or preserved for longer storage. It's packed with vitamins B6 and C, providing great nutritional value and contributing to a healthy diet, especially during difficult times when fresh produce might be scarce. The cultivation of cabbage requires some care to ensure a bountiful harvest, but its hardiness and the ability to store well make it a worthwhile addition to any garden. Choosing the right variety of cabbage for your garden is crucial, as different varieties are suited to different climates and seasons. Before planting, it's important to prepare the soil properly. Cabbage thrives in well-drained, fertile soil with a neutral pH, benefiting from the addition of compost to improve nutrient availability. The soil should also have adequate levels of calcium, magnesium, and potentially boron, depending on the organic matter and pH level of your soil. A balanced fertilizer can be applied before planting and periodically throughout the growing season to support healthy growth. When it comes to planting, cabbage can be started indoors or directly sown into the garden. For indoor starts, seeds should be sown six to eight weeks before the last frost date and then transplanted outdoors once they're strong enough. Direct sowing is also an option, especially for fall harvests, with seeds planted a quarter inch deep and thinned as necessary. Cabbage requires full sun and regular watering to develop into crisp, juicy heads. Maintenance includes mulching to retain moisture, regular watering, and fertilization to ensure the plants have enough nutrients for growth. Pests such as aphids, cabbage worms, and root maggots can pose threats, so employing strategies like row covers, companion planting, and organic pesticides can help protect your crop. Additionally, crop rotation is recommended to prevent soil-borne diseases. Harvesting cabbage when heads are firm and of the desired size prevents splitting. Post-harvest cabbages can be stored in a cool, moist place for extended use, with some varieties even sweetening after a light frost. Whether you're looking to add fresh greens to your diet or preserve them through fermenting into sauerkraut or kimchi, cabbage is a versatile and valuable crop for any home gardener aiming for self-sufficiency. Number four, pumpkin. Growing pumpkins can be a satisfying and strategic choice for those looking to enhance their self-sufficiency, especially during times of uncertainty. Their cultivation is relatively straightforward, requiring certain soil conditions, spacing, and care to thrive. Additionally, the nutritional benefits of pumpkins make them an excellent crop for supporting health and well-being in challenging times. Pumpkins prefer well-prepared soil rich in organic matter, indicating a preference for hills or mounds in regions with colder climates or less than ideal soil textures. This method warms the soil more quickly and improves drainage, essential for healthy pumpkin growth. Direct sowing of seeds into the garden is recommended once the soil temperature consistently exceeds 60 degree F, 15.6 degrees Celsius, with varying planting windows based on USDA hardiness zones ranging from late May to early July for most zones, and specific adjustments for zones with shorter or frost-free growing seasons. Proper spacing is crucial to accommodate their sprawling growth, and regular weeding helps minimize competition for nutrients. Pumpkins boast numerous health benefits that make them a valuable addition to the diet. They are rich in dietary fibers and low in calories, aiding in weight management by promoting feelings of fullness and maintaining stable blood sugar levels. This combination of qualities can help prevent food and sugar cravings, contributing to a healthy and balanced diet. For those considering growing pumpkins in raised beds, late spring after the last frost is the ideal time to start. Pumpkins are sun-loving and cold-sensitive, making them suitable for direct sowing in soil that has reached around 70 degree F, 21.1 degrees Celsius. The growing season lasts approximately 95 to 120 days, culminating in a fall harvest. Varieties such as New England Cheddar, Hybrid Pam, Crystal Star, Blue Doll, and Knucklehead offer diverse options for both culinary and decorative uses. Proper soil preparation, watering, and pest management are key to ensuring a bountiful harvest. Number five on the hit list for garden gold during tough times? Beans. Why are beans such a game changer in your backyard farm? For starters, they're a powerhouse of nutrition, simple to grow, and they've got this awesome party trick of pumping the soil full of nitrogen. That's right. Beans are your go-to for keeping the pantry stocked when the going gets rough. Here's the scoop on growing beans. 
They love a sunny spot with well-draining soil that's a touch on the acidic side. Think pH levels between 6 and 6.8. You'll want to plant these bad boys directly in the ground since they're not big fans of moving house once they've settled in. Keep the water coming, but don't drown them. You want moist, not waterlogged. A little mulch can go a long way to keep that moisture level just right and the temperature steady. Beans have this cool hookup with rhizobia bacteria, which lets them grab nitrogen right out of the air and feed it to the soil, cutting down your need for fertilizer and keeping your garden greener. Now, beans aren't too picky, but they do have their preferences. They don't like it too hot or too cold, so watch out for flowers dropping if the mercury dips below 55 degree F or soars above 90 degree F. And pests, yeah, they're fans of beans too. You might have to play defense against critters like the Mexican bean beetle or spider mites. A bit of shade cloth for those scorching days, and some organic pest control can keep your beans thriving. Beyond the garden, beans are a nutritional powerhouse, loaded with protein, fiber, vitamins, and minerals like folate. They're good for your heart, can help fend off certain cancers, and the fiber is great for your gut and keeping those pounds in check. And when it comes to eating them, beans are as flexible as they come. Throw them in soups, toss them in salads, whip up a batch of hummus, they've got you covered. Plus, they store like a dream, so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor all year round. Beans, folks, they're not just good, they're essential for riding out those tough times with a full belly. Number six, tomatoes. Tomatoes are not only a staple in many cuisines worldwide, but also offer significant health benefits and are relatively easy to grow, making them a superb choice for anyone looking to enhance their diet or start a home garden. They thrive best in full sun conditions, requiring six, eight hours of direct sunlight daily and prefer warm temperatures between 55-85 degree F. For successful growth, they need well-draining, fertile soil with a pH of six, 6.8 and consistent moisture with about one, two inches of water weekly. Choosing the right tomato variety, determinate for a compact growth or indeterminate for continuous production, is crucial depending on your space and climate. Tomatoes are highly regarded for their nutrient content, offering vitamins C and K, potassium, folate, and a significant amount of lycopene, a powerful antioxidant. Lycopene is of particular interest due to its potential health benefits, including reducing the risk of chronic diseases, protecting against sunburn, and potentially lowering the risk of certain types of cancer. Fresh tomatoes are a good source of lycopene, but processed tomato products like tomato paste provide higher concentrations and increased bioavailability. Interestingly, the bioavailability of lycopene improves with cooking, and when consumed with a source of fat, considering lycopene is fat-soluble. Despite their health benefits, it's important to be mindful of potential allergies and sensitivities to tomatoes in some individuals. Incorporating tomatoes into your diet is straightforward, given their versatility in recipes from salads and sandwiches to pizzas and pastas. Growing your own tomatoes not only ensures a fresh supply of this nutritious fruit, but also allows you to select varieties best suited to your taste and gardening conditions adding valuable knowledge and self-reliance to your skill set. Number seven on the list of survival crops for difficult times, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are a nutritious and versatile crop that can be a significant asset in a home garden, especially during difficult times. Their cultivation history dates back centuries, with evidence suggesting their travel across the Pacific from South America to Polynesia long before European contact. By the time of the European conquests, Sweet potatoes were already a staple food across many cultures, indicating their long-standing value as a food source. Growing sweet potatoes involves several steps, but is manageable with some basic knowledge. Start by choosing a suitable location that receives full sunlight for most of the day. Sweet potatoes thrive in loamy soil with a pH between 5.0 and 6.5, enriched with organic matter to ensure good drainage. You can grow sweet potatoes from slips, which are sprouts grown from mature sweet potatoes. These slips are either purchased or can be grown at home by rooting a sweet potato in soil or water. Begin the rooting process about six, eight weeks before the last frost date to ensure they are ready for planting in warmer weather. When it comes to planting, create raised mounds or use grow bags if space or soil quality is an issue. 
Sweet potatoes are planted in mounds about 6 to 8 inches tall and spaced about 3 feet apart to allow for vine growth. The slips are planted deep enough to cover the roots and the stem up to the leaves, ensuring they are well watered initially to help them root properly. Care for sweet potatoes includes regular weeding and watering, especially during hot, dry periods. However, be cautious of overwatering, which can lead to rot. Sweet potatoes do not require high nitrogen fertilizers, which can promote foliage over root development. Instead, use a low nitrogen fertilizer or compost. Protect the plants from frost and watch out for pests like flea beetles and diseases like alternaria leaf spot and black rot. Harvesting sweet potatoes is usually done three, four months after planting, when the leaves and vines begin to yellow and die back. Handle the harvested roots carefully as they bruise easily. Curing sweet potatoes after harvest enhances their sweetness and extends their storage life. To cure, keep them in a warm, humid place for about 10 to 14 days. Then store in a cool, dark place where they can last for several months. Sweet potatoes are not only a source of carbohydrates, but also rich in vitamins A and C, beta-carotene, and minerals like calcium and iron, making them an excellent crop for nutrition and health benefits. The orange flesh varieties are particularly known for their moist texture, while white and yellow varieties are creamier, and purple ones are drier and starchier. Landing at number 8, we've got lentils. Let me tell you, Growing lentils right in your own backyard is not just smart. It's a move that can pay off big time, especially when you think about how good they are for you and how many different ways you can use them in the kitchen. These little powerhouses are loaded with protein and do best in soil that's got good drainage, is slightly acidic to neutral, we're talking a pH between 6 and 7.5, and is full of good stuff like compost or aged manure. Getting your soil ready this way Make sure your lentils will have everything they need to grow strong. You'll want to get your lentils in the ground early in the spring, like two weeks before the last frost is expected. Or once the frost is definitely done and the soil is warm, about 68 degrees F. They need a spot that gets plenty of sunshine and is out of the wind. When you plant, space those seeds about 1 inch deep and 5 inches apart, and keep your rows at least 18 inches apart. This setup gives them enough room to breathe and grow, and a little support from a low trellis won't hurt. Taking care of your lentil plants means keeping the water just right. Aim for about an inch per week, and make sure the soil stays damp but not soaking. Lentils are part of the legume family, which is great for your garden because they help put nitrogen back into the soil. After they start growing, the seeds with rhizobacteria will start pulling nitrogen from the air and feeding it to the soil which helps everything else grow better without needing to pile on nitrogen-heavy fertilizers. Instead, focus on giving them nutrients like phosphorus and potassium to help with the roots, flowers, and those all-important pods. When it's time to harvest, just stop watering once the pods start drying up. Collect them, let the seeds dry out completely, and then store them in an airtight container somewhere cool and dark. This way, you've got a stash of high-protein, nutrient-rich lentils ready to go. They're a fantastic source of things like fiber, iron, and folate, and they'll keep you stocked up when times get tough. Number 9 and 10. Onions and Garlic Onions and garlic are not just culinary staples that add flavor to meals. They are also nutritional powerhouses that can significantly benefit your health, especially during tough times when food might be scarce. These allium vegetables are easy to grow, requiring minimal space and care, and can be stored for long periods, making them ideal for ensuring food security. Onions are very low in calories but high in vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, B vitamins, and potassium. They provide a range of health benefits, from lowering blood glucose levels in people with diabetes to reducing systolic and diastolic blood pressure in those with hypertension. Onions also have compounds with antioxidant properties that may help ward off degenerative diseases by inhibiting conditions like colorectal cancer and hyperlipidemia. Garlic, while similar in many health benefits to onions, stands out for its significant impact on cardiovascular health by reducing total blood cholesterol levels, particularly LDL cholesterol. It also has a notable effect on lowering both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Garlic is exceptionally high in vitamins and minerals, such as iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, zinc, and copper, covering 100% of the daily value for copper. It also contains antioxidants that have anti-inflammatory effects,
which can reduce the risk of chronic conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Additionally, garlic is beneficial for bone health by increasing estrogen levels in postmenopausal women. Both onions and garlic have low glycemic indexes, making them suitable for managing blood sugar levels. The antioxidants in these vegetables, such as quercetin in onions, can fight oxidative stress and prevent damage to the organism, further highlighting their role in maintaining cardiovascular health and preventing diseases. Incorporating onions and garlic into your diet can improve the nutrition of your meals without significantly increasing calorie content. Their versatility in cooking, from seasoning to being used as main ingredients, adds both flavor and a health boost to your dishes. Growing them at home provides not only a continuous supply of these beneficial vegetables, but also the peace of mind that comes with self-sufficiency in food production. Number 11 spot on our list of must-grow crops to keep your pantry stocked. During those tough times, we've got spinach and kale on deck. Here's the scoop. Tucking some spinach and kale into your garden is smart thinking for anyone wanting to beef up their food stash, particularly when the going gets rough and supermarket shelves start looking a little bare. These greens are chock full of nutrients and are pretty forgiving in the garden, growing happily in lots of different weather situations. That makes them gold for folks looking to dig into gardening without too much fuss. Kale's a real trooper, standing strong in both the chill and the warmth, avoiding that quick bolt to seed that you see in a lot of other plants when it heats up. It's all about keeping it well watered. Think around 1 to 1.5 inches a week and throwing some mulch down to keep that moisture in check. The cool thing about kale? It gets even tastier when the temperature drops, sweetening up as the cold turns its starches into sugars. Plus, you can keep picking its leaves throughout the season if you do it right, although you've got to watch out for some pesky bugs and the odd disease here and there. But hey, a little vigilance goes a long way. Spinach, on the flip side, prefers the cooler days, but can handle a frost and keep on kicking down to 15 degree F. It likes its drinks like kale does and perks up with a bit of high nitrogen feed to stay lush. You can plant this green straight in the garden, spacing it out depending on if you're after baby leaves or the full-grown deal. You can even start it indoors to get a jump on the season. And get this, planting it near some of its veggie buddies, like cabbage, can actually help it grow better. Spinach comes in a variety of types, each with its own fit for the season and your dinner plate. When it comes to nutrition, both of these greens are like the superheroes of the vegetable world. Spinach packs a punch with iron, which is a big deal for keeping your energy up and dodging anemia, especially when you're pushing yourself hard. Kale? It's right up there too, loaded with iron and branded a superfood for its off-the-charts vitamins and minerals that keep your body in fighting shape. And kale isn't just nutritious, it's also a champ in the kitchen. You can cook it any which way or go bold and munch it raw, though giving it a little TLC like a quick massage or a blanch can make it a bit more tender. From crunchy chips and zesty pesto to hearty salads and smoothies, kale's ready to jazz up your meals and keep your diet on point, even when times are tough. So, growing spinach and kale? It's a no-brainer. They're not just easy to grow and loaded with goodness. They're your ticket to making sure you've got a steady stream of fresh food right from your backyard. Locking these greens into your garden game plan is a solid move for anyone serious about keeping their plate full and nutritious, especially when the world outside is a bit unpredictable. Thank you for watching.